Final score, Scunthorpe United 1, Wrexham 3. Oh, we're top of the league, and we should be after that performance. That was comprehensive. And exactly what we wanted to see, Wrexham coming off a block of four home games in which we've shown our most consistent form in that there were no real points in it where we looked in any danger. There weren't those periods where teams got at us. And, well, the question was, could we continue that away from home, having stuttered a bit in away games? Oh, yeah, we did. I mean, we scored three, and the only downside of this game is we really should have scored six or seven. The, the amount of chances we created was terrific. And poor Scunthorpe, apart from a little period at the start of the second half, didn't have anything really to come back at us with. Anyway, two changes to the Wrexham side. Anthony Ford took a knock, of course, on Sunday. So Bryce Susanna came in at right back. And also Ollie Palmer was able to start. So he replaced Sam Dolby up front. And Wrexham, after opening 10, 15 minutes of settling into the game, it was quite scrappy. Scunthorpe, who matched up our formation and were quite direct, trying to hit their strikers, were really pressing us. And, and the game was scrappy and bitty and didn't really settle down. Once the game settled down, Wrexham took complete control. We should have gone ahead in the 11th minute. Toza with a short throw to Lee, who gave it back, and Toza stood in a lovely left-footed cross from the left side. Mullin attacking it, had a free header about 10 yards out, and tried to put it in the top corner and put it wide. He knew straight away he should have scored. It was a heck of a chance. He was close on the fin, and there was nice pace on the ball. If he got it on target, the keeper would have had to make a great save. But it was around the 15, 16 minute mark that Wrexham really started imposing themselves and there was a spell of pressure for a couple of minutes in which Scunthorpe were incredibly lucky to survive until the 21st minute when they cracked. Young getting the ball, popping the ball inside to the edge of the area looking for a return pass. It actually defected off a defender and fell kindly for Young who had a good sight of goal just inside the area. He drilled it with power. Put it above the keeper, though, who made a really good reflex save, pushing it over the bar. That was nothing compared to what would happen from the corner, though. Young sweeping it in. Tunnycliffe getting up well, uh, at six yards out and heading it back across goal. The, the keeper seemed to not see it coming. I don't know, for a moment, didn't seem to react. And then made a remarkable reflex save at the last second, just throwing his hand up. He was quite low, but he managed to get enough on it to push it up onto the face of the bar. It dropped back down in the goal mouth and was put behind for another corner. Poor Tony Cliff <laughs> would go very close again soon afterwards, close to scoring his first goal for Wrexham. But that pressure continued, and in the 21st minute, we took the lead. Young winning the ball in midfield and feeding it wide again to Toza, who was on the left after one of his long throws. He stood the cross in. It was a decent cross, but had a bit too much on it and was cleared. O'Malley, the left-back, got to it by the corner flag. Mullen went to close him down. And uh, this was just admirable football by Mullen. O'Malley tried to drill it away down the flank. Mullen charged it down. I knew the thought it would go out for a goal kick. Now, whether Mullen was just street smart enough to realise there was backspin on it, or whether he just, and to be fair, this is quite possible, just chases everything on the off chance to, you know, once in a million... It'll actually fall kindly. But Mullen chased the ball, which looked like it was going to bounce straight out for a goal kick. It did stop. And so Mullen was around the back of the defence, fed a great first-time cross into the near post, and Palmer was there to side-foot it into the bottom right corner. And Wrexham had a massively deserved lead and continued to push on. That second near thing for Tunnycliffe came soon afterwards. Toza with a long throw. Tunnycliffe rising at the near post and flicking it over the goalkeeper. An absolutely incredible goal line clearance by O'Malley. Diving towards his own goal. Somehow getting his head onto it. And not only keeping it out, but managing to head it off the line and over the bar for a corner. <laughs> Wrexham continuing though to put the pressure on because from that corner it was cleared but Jones got it back did brilliantly about 30 yards out he had two men on him faked the players inside and then just dropped the shoulder and went between the two of them fed out wide Mullen played a super first time return pass into Jones's path and it looked like it had to be a goal and he mishit his shot into the ground and it just spooned gently up into the keeper's arms which is a heck of a pub by the way Wrexham kept going, kept going, ball long to McFadgen, who was playing very high up the pitch, 
seemed to be clearly fouled from behind. The referee let a lot of tackles from behind go, but it dropped to Lee, who picked her up nicely, cut inside, and ripped a curler, which went about a foot above the top right corner, which was his target. But Wrexham took the lead in the 32nd minute. Free kick in midfield. Young sweeping it in. Aaron Hayden. You've got to foul Aaron Hayden before the ball comes in or you're in trouble. I mean, it was magnificent. Uh, and TV is marking him. And, <laughs> you know, he is marking him. He's, he's close. He's tight to him. And he jumps for the ball. And he looked like a decent centre-back. Hayden, though, is literally head and shoulders above him. It's another remarkable leap from pretty much a standing start. And he just plants it in the bottom right corner with his head. Brilliant stuff. Hayden on nine goals now. Most he ever scored in the season. Wow, what a weapon he is. So Wrexham looking totally dominant. It was a, a great first half. The midfield energetic, Lee looking very threatening. The strikers buzzing around. I mean, the wing backs very high up the pitch. It looked great. But Scunthorpe managed to have a little spell. And then, with three minutes left, pulled the goal back. It was a good interchange, which ended up with Butterfield uh, picking the ball up in midfield. Allowed him too much space, I would say, to pick his spot. Swung across into the far post. Road got goal side of McFadgen and took it down and finished neatly from close range, popping the ball across Howard. And suddenly, and surprisingly, in a game which looked so one-sided at half-time, it was still alive. And indeed, Scunthorpe, for the first 10, 15 minutes of the second half, had their best spell of the match. The only spell where they really took the game to us. And you wondered whether they were in the game. Nuttall was working hard up front, but getting very little joy out of Wrexham's centre-backs. Managed to somehow force his way through outside the box and feed it into the area to Lavery in the right channel. He drove the ball across Howard, who got down well to save it pretty comfortably. After an hour, Wrexham made a change. Bryce Susanna coming off and Liam McIlinton coming on. He had a, a fruitful half hour as a right wing back. But there was another chance for Scunthorpe first as Rowe on the right wing swept in across to O'Malley, his kind of left wing back teammate. And he brought the ball down, drilled it in. But McIlinton, only just on the pitch, made a really good block six yards out to make sure there was no problem. And Wrexham started to wrest control of the game again. He opened up a, an opportunity which nearly was a glorious goal. A cross into the box, cleared. Young taking it about 25 yards out, letting it drop and then hitting a glorious dipping volley, which at first looked like it was going well over, but then when it started dipping, gosh, nearly dropped in, just dropped over the bar with the goalkeeper backpedalling and lunging desperately. But just like the first goal, halfway through the second half, there came a point where Wrexham just suddenly took control. Uh, Scunthorpe seemed to, again, the, the, the dam burst on them and they couldn't get the ball clear and Wrexham just pinned them in the box and making chance after chance until in the end they cracked. The first of them, well, I mean, <laughs> Tony Cliff was desperate and lucky not to get his first goal for Wrexham. Every single game it seems that McFadgen is unlucky not to get his first goal, goal for Wrexham. Young feeding him. He ran onto it on the left-hand side and drilled from about 20-odd yards left of centre. A fabulous hit across the keeper who had no chance, thumped against the post and bounced out again. An absolutely magnificent hit. And then moments later, Wrexham at it again. James Jones dry, uh, picking the ball up, driving it wide to McElinden, who popped a lovely side-footed first-hand cross and Mullen, 10 yards out with a real chance, took a sweep. And missed the ball. <laughs> a bit of a, a decent opportunity again for Mullen. But like I said, the dam would burst. And only just over a minute from the ball hitting the post, Wrexham had the third goal. And it was nicely worked. McFadgen doing really well to win the ball with his head on the halfway line and popping it inside to Lee. Lee played a lovely return pass and McFadgen fed up the teasing cross, a beauty in from the left-hand side. The keeper couldn't get there in time and Mullen side-footed it in to give Wrexham the 3-1 lead and get straight back into the comfort zone. Wrexham had to shout for a red card against Beeston soon afterwards. It caught Palmer with his arm. Palmer went down heavily and stayed down, had to have treatment. I, I, I'm not convinced personally it was deliberate, but he did make contact with a leading arm, jumping for a header, so I, I guess I can see um, the points. Ref actually didn't give a free kick. 
Back some another change, Lee getting a 12 minute rest and O'Connor coming on. And like McAlinden, O'Connor would also have an impact. He just did well on the left hand side. Continuity passing, keeping moves going, progressing moves. Uh, a nice example of it soon after he came on. McFadgen popping the ball to him. He played a lovely return pass again. Uh, McFadgen squaring it perfectly for Mullin, who was in the act of hitting it on the penalty spot when O'Malley lunged in and made a terrific block to, to stop the shot from going in. <clears throat> O'Connor then again receiving the ball from a toes of throw, dinking the ball in cutely. It took a deflection, which took it to the far post. Palmer just outside the six yard box, pivoting and smashing a volley, which he just sliced a little bit, and that meant it went just wide to the left post. Palmer was so frustrated, he knew it was a chance. And then within a minute, as Wrexham again started to run riot, another near miss. Howard with a good ball down the left-hand side. Palmer, glorious touch inside. The ball's going over his shoulder. Looks like he's going out of play. And he manages to get after it and just flick the ball on the volley back perfectly to O'Connor. He pops a lovely return pass. Palmer squares it. And Mullen lunging in in the goal mouth, literally a couple of inches short of reaching it and tapping it into an empty net. The ball took a deflection off a defender. And from the throwing, Toza hurls it in. It's half cleared. Mullen getting it on the edge of the area. Beautiful skill. Just flicked it over his man and then lashed a shot, which he couldn't keep down uh, from just inside the box. Sandolby got a couple of minutes at the end to replace Mullen. And he also looked lively as well. As Wrexham continued to put pressure on. Uh, <laughs> O'Connor getting the ball on the left-hand side of, the, of a crowded penalty area and driving in a shot which was on target but was blocked by James Jones who was running across the goalkeeper. The ball ricocheted across the face of goal and McAlinden would have had a tap-in from about a foot out except that a defender just about managed to get between him and the ball and desperately lunging got the tiniest of touches to flick it behind him as he was standing, like I said, virtually on the goal line. And then with two minutes of added time played, Wrexham's last opportunity, Palmer doing brilliantly to hold the ball up, he had no support, he had defenders all round him, he brought it down superbly, beat one and then held her up on the edge of the area waiting for support, Dolby arrived, he fed him and Dolby drove in a powerful shot from inside the box, just inside the box, which was well parried by the keeper, it came back out to James Jones and he had a shot which was blocked, there was a half-hearted shout for handball which I don't think was really justified. In the fourth minute of added time, to be fair to Scunthorpe, they came terribly close to narrowing the score to 3-2. I say to be fair to Scunthorpe, a 3-2 scoreline would have been absolutely no reflection of how the game had gone. It was Apter, their best attacking player, who picked her up on the right-hand side, cutting, and hit a terrific curling, dipping drive, which Howard had no chance with, hit the bottom of the bar, bounced down and came back out again. And soon afterwards, the final whistle was blown and the Wrexham support, which again was outstanding. I haven't had a figure for it, but I'd love to know how many went down there, were applauded by their team who had gone top of the table. I've got to say, I mean, it was an excellent performance. It genuinely, really, I'd say, should have been six or seven. And there were a lot of terrific performances. Howard didn't have a lot to do and had very little chance with the goal. He did make a sharp save at the start of the second half, which I think you'd expect him to make, but it was important, because if they pulled the goal back then, we would have had a game on our hands. He also, his distribution, he just kept the game going really quickly, and that was a, that was useful, that was. But a, a, another pleasingly quietish game for Howard. At the back, I mean, the three centre-backs were terrific. Tunnicliffe was just quietly solid, j just did his job his part of the pitch there would be no trouble coming from there he, he did well he engaged physically well as always and um, the other two are utterly outstanding I, I, I mean uh, Toza with a matching bandage as well I noticed he wore red on Sunday white away shirt this time so he wore a white bandage fashion fashion guru that he is um he was terrific. He was playing good diagonals. He had a lot of throws, and there was barely any room, perimeter room, around the side of the pitch. And he was slinging them in with good distance. Lots of chances came, well, one directly from his throw, and lots of them from the, the difficulty there was in, in actually getting the ball clear. But he also, I mean, a big part of the, the long throw tactic, he, he was getting the ball knocked back out to him. 
and he was beating people. He was putting in great crosses. It was a really good attacking performance by, by Toza. And then Hayden as well. I mean, the, the goal's phenomenal. His defending was excellent. And he, again, was driving the ball forwards at times and causing issues. So, so great stuff. Centre mids all were impressive too. Young, again, just full of energy. Had a good shot. Was driving play forwards constantly. Jones had a very good game. You know, we, we the, the the fact that he's going to run his absolute heart out is is a given, and the fact that he's going to look just as fresh after the end of the game as he does when he starts it, again is a given. He had some nice little quality touches, though. He had some some bits of skill, like when he turned his man at the start to set up the chance, which he then couldn't quite take. Um, he was moving the ball around nice and crisply. It was a really impressive all round performance. So. Kudos to him, excellent stuff. And Elliot Lee, again, was just tormenting him down the left-hand side. He was creating, causing all sorts of issues, uh, using the ball intelligently, always there, popping up for return passes. Uh, very, very threatening. Great performance by him. The wing-backs, well, Hazan actually didn't get into the game all that much. I mean, he may have been carrying a knock, I'm thinking, as he came off after an hour. So that, that was a, a pity for him, but he certainly didn't do anything wrong. On the left-hand side, McFadden was terrific, just constantly bombing down the wing. All oh, the little one-twos, good crossing, hits the post. He was a constant threat. A fantastic performance by McFadden. Up front, Palmer, again, did really well. Dominated the centre-backs physically. Like I say, it sort of summed her up, that incident at the end of the game where he's holding her up against three defenders and they just can't get the ball off him. Uh, he's He was really, really impressive. And Mullen had had a strange game in a way. He scored a goal, could easily have scored a hat trick. Could he score more of a hat trick possibly? Um, and things often didn't seem to quite drop right for him. He seems to be snatching a little bit of things. I'm sure he wasn't. But he comes out of the game with a goal, with an assist. And again, his work rate was terrific. His movement was terrific. He popped some good balls in the box, quite apart from his assist. As a, a really, yeah, despite the fact that he missed a few chances, a, a performance full of threat and, and full of goal potential. On another day, he'd have had three or four. The subs did well. McAlinden got half an hour in and was a real threat going forward. Got a lot of balls into the box and a couple of shots. Nearly scored with that one that was deflected away from him. And looked very, very lively. Had very little defending to do, quite frankly. Because we dominated the last half hour of the game. Uh, O'Connor had a tidy little efficient performance in, in midfields, just moving the ball on intelligently, as I said before. And Dolby, only coming on with two minutes left. Interesting to see him and Palmer together and did well with that strike. He nearly scored. So, so yeah, good stuff. Great performance by the team. Great support and great looking table. The final score of Scunthorpe United 1. Oh yeah, man of the match. We made Elliot Lee man of the match in the commentary. Um, on reflection, I mean, there were so many good contenders with a tough choice. On reflection, I'm feeling a bit sorry for McFadgen. I've got to be honest, but nonetheless, I mean, there were so many good performances. You know, pick the bones out of those. Wrexham top of the league. Nice one. So, the final score of Scunthorpe United 1, Wrexham 3. I'm Mark Griffiths from Wrexham AFC.